Hey, it's just so Trish, and I know I don't really talk a lot about my garden, but I got to go shopping yesterday at a really cool nursery that's in Lee County. It's in North Fort Myers, and it's called Echoes Global Nursery, and everything they sell there is edible or of use, like a living tree or whatever, or a living fence. And so I just picked up a couple really cool things there, and I just kind of wanted to share. So the first one I was really excited about was this Barbados cherry and I was really shocked because we've had like we call them choke cherries or Japanese cherries I don't know what they're called really and it was sour but this one was incredibly sweet so we're super excited about that and let me show you the tag and it was nice this is a one gallon about five and a half feet tall that I got for um, 20, 20 bucks I think my peach tree was 24 so then the next one is my peach tree, which is six foot tall. See, it goes all the way up to here. And, um, and it's got all the crazy awesome buds on it. And I've had this tropical, oh no, this tropical peach tree before. The peach is on it and it's fantastic. That chicken, you see it, is I am my cherries. No. No, these are my kids' show chickens that they never showed, but we're letting them out for a little bit. But it's absolutely wonderful. Six foot tall, one gallon, I got it for $24. They are like the best price for getting things. I mean, Home Depot and all that tries to sell it, but man, these people, and as a volunteer, it's a nonprofit organization, so. My other one I picked up for 20 bucks was a dwarf everbearing. I have a black mulberry, and my kids absolutely love mulberries. And from what I understand, these are easier to um, do cuttings off of and grow new plants. Because that's kind of the goal. To have fun with and play with. And that's another one gallon at five feet for 20 bucks. So I'm like, really? Our absolute favorite is this one. Oh, focus. Cranberry hibiscus. This, these little leaves are edible. It's a like a cranberry berry type um, flavor and it's crispy so it's awesome in salads especially for me because my favorite salad is a romaine salad with cran dried cranberries bacon feta cheese you know so that kind of muskiness to it and dried onions and croutons and so like I'm just this is like an amazing add-on to go into that salad and it's like really high in vitamin C and it lowers your blood pressure so yum um then I got this Katuk. I've killed one of these before. Yeah, sometimes that happens. But they're beautiful. Look at the underside. And these two are edible. The leaves are edible. And you can make a... Um, it's actually kind of a calcium enriching um, plant. You eat the leaves. And it really helps with children that have problems with calcium with not getting enough milk. So pretty good one too and this is notorious for making a really yummy salad this is has a horseradish type flavor to it and then this one if you haven't heard of it is really awesome and it's really good to um it is really good it's called a moringa it's little it grows six feet every year and i actually have two plants here so when they look a little better i might transplant them into a bigger pot before I stick them in the ground and this is like the superfood it is a superfood you just eat the um, leaves raw or you can dehydrate them and grind them dry them and grind them and add them to your food this is superfood it's like more vitamin C than an orange more you know this than that and there's like pamphlets and stuff you can find all over the web on it so it's pretty cool so I will tell you, I am a little bit addicted to just growing crazy stuff. So this is ginger that I grew. And I actually threw it. I got it from the neighbor and it was fresh. Because he's like, I have too much. I got to eradicate it. And I was going to cut it up and make tea, dry it for tea. And I never got around to it. So it just like, it looked done. And I threw it in my raw compost. And you can see the roots. I just pulled it out the other day because I need to break it up so this is like my raw compost that I um, get out of the chickens because we got to get in there and clean that out today and um, 
I threw them in there and then they grew like this and so now I got to break them up so I can plant them and then I love avocados I mean like I have seriously I've at one point have had 10 or 15 avocados growing and where we're at is kind of the northern limit so what I end up doing the only avocados I grow from seed are the ones that I get from my neighbors or my friends that live either where I'm at or north of where I'm at because I know that those plants will um, do just fine the other thing I do is when I eat romaine and cut them off I will I have like a little pot I stick them in at the in the house and then when I get a chance I just kind of come and I stick them back in here kind of see nothing elaborate but what's really cool is like all of this is new growth from me planting my garbage that would have been gone to a pig so they're coming back oh he swiped he doesn't have the egg anymore so we have a dog who thinks it's fun to grab the eggs I don't know maybe let the egg go look for the egg so just a little fun this is our local chicken pen that houses the um, toy chickens kind of what I call them and then we were blessed a neighbor brought us guineas and um And then I have this one chicken. That one chicken, I know, just a little bit around the house for us. This one chicken here was one of 12. And it's a heritage breed that did not do very well. It didn't handle, when we introduced it to the other chickens, it seemed fine. And then over time, those chickens were killing them. <clears throat> and they're slow to grow. And so this poor hen is the last of 12 left. Which is kind of bummed out because I wish they would have made it. They're beautiful and they're beautiful birds. Um, so I, we've had a hard time finding a home that would accept, or not really a home, a clan of birds that would accept this one lone chicken. Because I don't think it's kind of fair to have a lone chicken. And so we got these six guineas. And these six guineas have allowed this chicken to be part of their clan which is really cool and so I'm excited about the guineas they're awesome they're loud um, I grew up with guineas and when I called my stepmom I'm like I got guineas she's like have you lost your mind you know why would you want to get guineas and for her she's just like they drove her nuts and for me I'm kind of like but they remind me of my childhood so how can I not have guineas so, kind of one of those things. But it's really cool. They eat the ticks in the ground. I actually clean up the ticks. They're somewhat good on mosquitoes. But for the most part, they um, they eat ticks. Which is good because we have a lot of ticks around here. So, anyway. That's just a little bit of what's going on here. There's the dog talking to the chicken. Such a notorious event. And we will talk to you later. I just thought maybe you'd enjoy this. See ya. Peace out.